As a project manager, you will often need to facilitate meetings. So in this video, we'll look at the basic disciplines for how to facilitate a meeting. First and above all, prepare in advance. Make sure you do your prep. And a big part of that is making sure that you've got an agenda. You also need to make sure that the room that you're going to use is suitable and ready. Make sure all the equipment you need is there and where appropriate, you've tested it. In the room, choose the most prominent position, usually at the head of a table or at the front of the room. Introduce the meeting and explicitly state what the objective of the meeting is, what it is you're trying to achieve. And if people do not all know one another, facilitate a round of introductions where each person in the meeting introduces themselves to their colleagues. In a facilitation role, you need to be calm and confident, which means maintaining a good posture and high alertness throughout. To help you remain alert to what's going on in the room, ask for a volunteer to take notes so that you can focus on the people in the room rather than writing down what they've said. The note taker might take notes in a notepad, they might take notes electronically, or they might put them onto a whiteboard or flip chart so that everyone can see them. Finally, before you start, outline the process you're going to follow. If you've published your agenda, then take people through it. And if you deem it appropriate and necessary, establish some ground rules for the meeting. Through the meeting, remain alert, continually look around, check out how people are seeming and when people want to contribute. Ask questions, invite people to speak and listen carefully to the answers they give. Your priority is not to prepare the next question while someone is speaking, but to listen to them 100%. There will be time afterwards to ask your next question and expect the people around you to listen and pay attention too. Keep the meeting on track and make sure you stick to the topic. If the meeting starts to wander, then ask the note taker to make a note of where the meeting is at so that you can come back to the point later and then return to your agenda. If you encounter any kind of disrespectful or inappropriate behavior, Tackle it immediately and also address conflict. Make sure that the substance of the conflict is debated, but the process of discussion remains totally respectful and professional. Make sure everyone gets to contribute. Make sure that people who want to contribute get their turn, but also draw in the people who are more reticent. And when you sense that energy is starting to flag, create a break so that people can recharge. This is also a good way to handle minor levels of conflict. A break can provide time for people to reflect and cool down. At any one time, be clear the role that you are playing. Are you actively facilitating, helping people to find answers and discuss topics? Are you summarizing to ensure that everybody has a shared understanding of where you are? Are you advocating, promoting one point of view? By the way, this is rarely part of the proper role of a facilitator. Or are you concluding? Are you drawing the conversation to a close by testing and agreeing upon a decision or a position? At the end of the meeting, review key decisions that have been made and commitments that individuals have undertaken. Close the meeting formally and thank people for their participation and their contribution. And finally, after the meeting, make sure you do all of the appropriate and necessary follow up. So if you are going to facilitate meetings, what are the key skills that you need? Well, there are a good number of them and some of the most important are these. First, I'd say listening, the ability to listen carefully to what is being said, to put yourself and your own thoughts out of the way, 
and process the information completely. Secondly, asking questions. I place this after listening because you will understand the best question to ask only if you have listened to what's been said before. Because often the question will move the conversation or the discussion on. If you haven't been listening, there's a chance you'll just ask a question that doesn't have the impact that you want. And linked to that is observing the mood in the room, keeping an eye on each individual, sensing how they're feeling and when they want to contribute, when they're upset by what's being said, when they disagree, when they agree, when they're getting a little bit frustrated. Unless you can read the room in this way, you can't call upon the right people at the right time and make sure everybody feels heard and respected. And that is largely about balancing perspectives, making sure you hear all of the different points of view so that everybody feels that their thoughts, their perceptions are being fully recognised and respected by the group as a whole. A particularly challenging part of the facilitating role is drawing out contributions, ideas, perceptions and thoughts from the people who are particularly reticent. There will always be some people in the group who are shy or don't want to contribute for one reason or another. But that doesn't mean that they haven't got a lot to contribute. They're not having good ideas or possibly not recognising things that other people haven't acknowledged and taken properly into account. And talking about these slightly less confident colleagues, we sometimes need to be able to protect them from derisory comments, not necessarily intended to be disrespectful, but the sort of comments that can discourage them from making further contributions. And this, of course, leads us to the possibility of conflict. You need the skill to deal with it adroitly, to diffuse the conflict and make sure the points of view get heard without the egos feeling too bruised. And finally, the last two skills are to summarise effectively what's been said and to synthesise different points of view, different perspectives, information from different areas into a coherent whole. And I'd like to end with a checklist of eight of my favourite techniques to use while facilitating. None of these are advanced techniques. They are all very simple techniques that you can apply in many contexts. And the first you use at the start of the meeting, it's kind of like a pre-meeting check in asking people how they feel, what is on their mind at the moment. Because sometimes there will be something important that is bothering a small number of people in the meeting that if you don't deal with it before you dive into the main meat of the meeting, those people won't be able to concentrate properly. So at least let them get it off their chests and record it possibly onto a flip chart or a whiteboard so that everyone is aware of it. And you have been able to suggest how you will return to that topic at an appropriate time. And of course, sometimes in a fast moving project, you might want to scrap the original purpose of the meeting and deal with that critical, urgent and important topic instead. The next technique is what in the UK is usually known as a round robin. I think in the US it's called a go round. And that is making sure everybody gets to contribute by literally calling on each person in turn to contribute. One technique or two. However you like it, a colleague of mine introduced me to the idea of having a card for every person. On one side of that card was a picture of a black hole and on the other side was a red herring. A red herring is when the conversation moves onto a topic which is totally irrelevant. In British idiom, a red herring is something that is irrelevant. A black hole represents when a conversation circles around a drain. It keeps going round and round and round, getting sucked into something without making any progress. Those cards are fantastic. If anyone in the group believes that we're talking about something that doesn't matter, they can play the red herring card. If they believe that we're going around in circles without making progress, they can play the black hole card. And if anyone else plays the same card, that's it. Your role as a facilitator is to acknowledge where we are 
and to restart the meeting from a new appropriate place. A big favourite of mine is to create time for silent reflection at the end of a part of a meeting or possibly before another start to the meeting. Invite people to reflect quietly and to make their own notes about what either you're going to be discussing or what you have discussed. Everyone enjoys a bit of brainstorming, but it really isn't that effective. I prefer brain writing. Get people to write all their ideas, one idea per card or per sticky note, and then to contribute all of their ideas into the centre or onto a flip chart or whiteboard so that everyone can see them. That way you can get a lot more ideas in a lot less time. It's less intimidating to people who are less confident about speaking up. And also, the first ideas that are often contributed to a brainstorming process can influence the ideas that other people contribute and therefore bias the conversation. With brain writing, because it's all happening in parallel and silently, you don't get that bias effect. A very simple technique that I always use is to have a big sheet of paper or a flip chart sheet on the wall labeled car park. And any topics that come up, which are important but not relevant to what we're discussing, get noted on the car park. That way, everyone in the room is confident that you haven't ignored it. And at the end of the meeting, you can go back to the car park and decide what you're going to do as a group about each topic that has been parked there. If it's a big meeting, a great way to make fast progress is to split the meeting into small groups and to get all of those groups working in parallel. Then one person from each group can present back to the wider group at the end of the session. And finally, a great way to end either a whole facilitated meeting or a section within the facilitated meeting is a one word checkout. Maybe you will ask people how they are feeling in one word or what they think has been most valuable about the session in one word. And then you go around the room, round robin style or go round style, getting that one word from everyone. Don't critique it. Don't discuss it. Just respect the one word that they choose. For me, meeting facilitation is one of the most fun parts of project management. I love doing it. I enjoy it and I have studied it over many, many years. If you are new to meeting facilitation, then know this. There is no magic. It's just a load of techniques and tools that you can deploy. If you are committed to doing it well, if you have the tools and techniques at your disposal, then you will be able to facilitate a good meeting every time. Please do give a big old thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. There's loads more great project management content to come. So please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.